Are the Russians trying to reignite their offensive efforts in the Donetsk? And are the Ukrainian forces stopping them cold? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It is November 5th, 2022. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first off, I'm using the live UA tactical map here. Uh, I like it because it shows even when there aren't visible changes to the front lines, there's, they still do a great job of capturing just how much combat is taking place. And when we look here, you can see that we're looking at sporadic artillery fire in the Kharkiv region, uh, and we are looking at artillery fire all along the line line of contact including in Kherson but you can see there's only one place where the Russian forces have been on the move and that is Donetsk and you see just how busy they've been in the last 12 hours this is indeed pretty crazy we've got attacks literally ranging from the uh south of Donetsk city all the way along this line of contact all the way literally to just south of Bilohorivka. Uh, this is a really broad push. But what's more interesting is, of course, Ukrainian um, Ministry of Defense has acknowledged that every one of these offensives have been stopped dead. And the reason, well, is when we look at the Institute for the Study of War, it becomes pretty obvious that most of the open source intel has been reporting that these forces are actually, many of them are newly mobilized personnel. Uh, why, you might ask yourself, is Ukraine, or excuse me, Russia, pushing so hard to put these newly mobilized personnel into combat? It doesn't make a lot of sense. And some of it is probably uh, propaganda driven. Uh, they want to be able to show at least some level of liberation um, after their inability to seize the or hold Kharkiv, their inability to hold the full territory of their new oblasts, and the planned withdrawal from Kherson. They need to have some sort of evidence of success. Uh, also interesting is that you even see some newly mobilized soldiers in and around Bakhmut. What makes this interesting is, of course, the fact that when we zoom into Bakhmut, here it is. What makes this interesting is that this is actually controlled by Prigozhin's Wagner Group. These are mercenaries that are ostensibly independent from the Russian Ministry of Defense. So you've got, of course, offensives that took place along the two major avenues of approach into Bakhmut, uh, the first being from the south here, and the second being this M03 highway. Uh, so when we look and see you realize that this is actually um, this is a problem that Russia has seemingly frequently experienced where they are unable to effectively concentrate their forces and rely instead on these broad offensives that really don't make any tactical sense. You have to think, especially newly mobilized men, first off, they shouldn't be used in an offensive capacity. Um, they shouldn't be used, period. And as I discussed in yesterday's video, where you would want to put them in order to give them the best chance to learn, get on the job training, so to speak, would be in areas like this, right? Thin areas where they will they have a chance to learn the basics from more experienced Russian troops about digging fighting positions and maintaining cover, how to look out for a drone, right? Grow some skill sets in low octane areas and then and then once after they have six months or three months of time, then you can move them to areas of the front where they can perform their duties, uh, you know, more like real soldiers and not just civilians you've stuffed into a uniform. But instead, of course, Russia is going to use these guys as cannon fodder uh, to seize what exactly? That's the question, right? Here's another village named Bilohorivka. Uh I guess they're trying to seize maybe this roadway here, um, which is not, okay, that's not an insignificant target. Uh, this attack seems to be about maybe advancing into this village here, Bakhmutsky, um, seizing more of the outskirts. 
Uh, of course, you've got numerous efforts to try to control major axes of advance into Bakhmut, uh, but none of these are succeeding, right? Russia still doesn't control these other key avenues of advance into the city. Uh, most of them are still under Ukrainian control. Man, I really like this map detail. This is so much, this is closer to what an actual military analyst would be, would be doing. Um, so would be using to plan. Uh, so you can see that there's just a lot of offensive efforts and none of them are succeeding and some of them don't even make any sense like this one here what it's an open field my guy like if you want what you should have done is taken the forces that went on this offensive and you should have allocated them to this one this one makes sense they want to cut off this major artery into bakhmut uh, why would you not just move your soldiers a, a few dozen feet to create uh, a mass, right, which is a, a, a term for putting your firepower in one place at one time to create devastating effects. Again, I think this is all indicative of a f largely failing Russian effort uh, on the command and control side, right? The and this this is sort of uh, how you would expect a big bureaucracy to operate. If the Russian Ministry of Defense is failing to exert proper command and control and proper planning, they are never going to sit there and tell that to their higher command or to Putin. They're going to blame not having enough soldiers. They're going to say, oh, it was the reason our offensive failed wasn't because we can't plan to save our lives or because none of our, our forces have radios or we don't even know the disposition of our forces, right? Those are embarrassing things to say as a commander. Instead, they're going to say, well, my plan was brilliant, but it would have succeeded if I, if I hadn't lost 50% of my troops. Well, now they have the troops and their plan still doesn't make any sense. So anyway, guys, that is the breakdown for today. Um, of course, as always, hit subscribe. Um, you know, we are so close to 200K. And of course, if you want the combat video breakdowns, the spicy stuff that I cannot show you on YouTube, the combat videos that you see on like the subreddits, uh, you want to become a member of the Patreon. Thanks so much to my lieutenant to your patrons. The new video actually just dropped yesterday. So you definitely want to sign up to check it out. I'll see you all in the next one.